Paul, Russia claiming it's scaling back its war, but today another round of attacks. What more can you tell us? Well, certainly overnight there were air raid alerts in Kyiv and there was some bombing on the outskirts of the city. And we've just talked about Chernihiv, where the mayor this morning said they took an even more severe pounding overnight than they would normally have done. I think a couple of things might, might be going on here. First of all, the Russians said that they would rapidly reduce their uh, assault on Kyiv, but they didn't say they would stop it. And they may be keeping their dug in positions or artillery positions in order to keep the Ukrainian troops occupied who are who are protecting the city or at the same time they may just be laying down some artillery cover for their armored columns to leave and go to you know reorganize and resupply themselves at any rate you know the Russians are pulling out and they're doing it without admitting essentially that they've um, that their um, invasion plan in the, in the north was a humiliating failure. Yeah, that's another aspect of this. And, you know, I saw um, a report from you earlier this morning where you said the, the Russian words are being drowned out by Russian bombs. So really, we need to look at their actions and not their words at this point. Well, that was from the president of the of the country, from Ukraine, who's always very eloquent. And he said, look, you know, the, we're still hearing those loud explosions in spite of what Russia is saying, I think the fear now is that the Russians are going to begin to move their troops in other directions, probably to the east and, and certainly maybe to the south and try to connect up those two, uh, those two columns. So in fact, the war might just be expanding rather than reducing, uh, no matter what they've said about Kyiv. Uh, at the same time, you know, peace talks were, you know, did show some progress yesterday, but I think everybody now has pretty much said there's a lot more work to do before they'd ever reach the point of a ceasefire. Probably weeks and weeks of work, and that means weeks and weeks of war. And even then, the Kremlin, as to your point, playing down any hopes of a, a breakthrough following yesterday's talks, and, and Moscow even seeming to imply that not too much came out of them. So where's the disconnect here, Paul? Yeah, I know. Well, the initial glow of it all yesterday was holy, holy cow, look what's happened. They've actually made some progress when people thought it's impossible that the Russians weren't serious about this. And they, in fact, may not be serious. They may be playing for time, as they've done all along, wanting to gain more territory in the south and in the east. And then would say, OK, now we're ready to talk when they've got a lot, a lot more, you know, a lot more under their conquest. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I think it's just going to be a hard slog to ever get a deal. The, uh, the issues are so complicated and so difficult, and especially when you have bombing going on in the country. I mean, there's, there can't be a ceasefire until the fighting stops, Jennifer. Yeah, and even air raid sirens going off where you are over the last 24 hours. <laughs> well, yesterday there were at least three that we counted here. There weren't any nearby uh, attacks or missiles. Uh, that we know of, but you know, certainly the Russians are not, as I said, they're not going to stop this war at all. What happened yesterday at the peace talks does not mean that, and it doesn't seem it's, uh, for the moment, that it's even meant a lull in the attacking. Okay. Paul Workman with the very latest from Lviv in Ukraine. Appreciate it, Paul. Thank you.